Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about the seventh studio album from Baltimore and death metal crew, Misery Index, entitled Complete Control. I've always really liked Misery Index's particular take on death metal. It's filled with huge, gnarly, muscular, churning grooves, aggressive, almost grindcore-style percussive beatdowns and rhythms, politically charged, socially aware lyrics. It's, it's enthusiastic, it's angry, it's violent, it's kind of everything I want from extreme music in one consistently convenient package. For all of these reasons, I would be reasonably excited for any Misery Index record, but I was especially excited for Complete Control for two reasons. The first of which being that, by the band's own admission, they're leaning heavier into their punk and their grind influences on Complete Control. Writing here in a press release, it's as if you took our early punk leanings, mixed them with the thematic darkness of the Killing Gods, and further blended it with the straightforwardness of Rituals of Power all in one concise presentation. And secondly, because as we've already noted, Misery Index are very politically active and socially aware. They regularly write about political, social, and economic injustices and systemic oppression. They regularly write about every everyday life, the ills of modern culture and society in the way that our world is structured to benefit certain types of people. And as such, it's hard not to be extremely curious as to how Misery Index have interpreted the past two years of dystopian nonsense and buffoonery. In fact, in that same press release I read from just a moment ago, Misery Index's lead singer and bassist, Jason Netherton, goes as far as to say that Complete Control is a concept album of sorts inspired by modern events, saying more specifically the central idea is that power is not something that is always wielded with brute force in the modern world through violence, but more so as a control society where it manifests on a self-governing individual level in and throughout everyday habits and practices. Each song then dissects these insidious forms of control as they work to fragment, reshape, and suppress our very selfhood in alignment with the interests of global finance. I know these are not easy themes to discuss, but to me, it's always more impactful and sincere to rage about real-world issues, no matter how much we'd like to escape them. And now, after having heard the album multiple times, I'm happy to report that Complete Control is every bit as intense and angry and uh, apocalyptically poignant as all of these words and press releases, all of my words and all of their words have implied and instructed. Opening track, Administer the Dagger, starts things off on an especially bleak and brutal note with some thick, oppressive, churning grooves and riffs and beats that almost bring to mind like some modern day cattle decapitation, but with a more distinct kind of hardcore spice and bite and flavor. Bludgeoning rhythm guitars rise up and crumble as Jason rambles and raves about capitalism and, and fascism, and eventually the whole thing turns into a gnarly kind of death metal, death grind rager, almost on par with what I would expect from the last few Napalm Death records. The Napalm Death vibes are strong once again on Necessary Suffering, a bloodthirsty and carnivorous piece of modern death grind with some of the best, or at the very least, some of the most intense performances on the entire record. There's also Rites of Cruelty, which is a nihilistically, dare I say, apocalyptically violent and, and devastating cut. More grind-like flurries of violent riffery and percussion are contrasted with some more melodic guitar playing and some hefty, muscular grooves that, in theory, wouldn't be out of place on a Lamb of God record. And then there's that massive, almost blackened death metal chorus with more pummeling, thunderous, bludgeoning percussion and, like, howling vocals. In that chorus, it really does feel as if the heavens themselves are crashing down upon you. Apocalypse has arrived, and its name is Misery Index. 
then there's some really crazed and manic stuff like Infiltrators and Now Defiled, where Grindcore is no longer an added ingredient. It is no longer a, a spice and additional flavor. It is the primary ingredient. It is the protein of the dish. And I love these cuts. They're just super in your face and abrasive. Every time I hear these tracks, I just want to like pick up a fucking brick and throw it at a cop car or something. Same goes for the album's lead single, The Eaters and The Eaten. Like I challenge you not to want to destroy something the moment you hear this song, especially not when you hear those super gnarly sharp riffs right after the chorus. Those things are so deadly they could tear through fucking flesh, man. Side note, this thing is just as destructive and provocative lyrically as it is musically. Misery Index always kind of have their finger on the pulse of the nation, and, and this track is no exception. It definitely does play into a lot of the worries and concerns that I think people my age have nowadays in regards to, to working full-time and feeling as if you're trapped in like a never-ending cycle of working for people who are super powerful and just don't care about you. Writing here, ancient ways ensnared in the monetary grip, sons and daughters slave by the wage and the whip, our way of life crush as our lives drown in work, is this what we're to think that a human life is worth? Who yearns to breathe this acrid acid air? Who among us bleeds for a better life beyond despair? Eaters and eaten, death work so nauseating. Like, straight up, I feel this. As a chef, someone who continued to work, or at least tried to work, over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, as somebody who was taken advantage of by shitty managers and owners and by other chefs, and as someone who was harassed by f fucking customers who just didn't seem to understand that we were in the midst of a pandemic and I was just trying to do my job, I fucking feel so much of this. If I have one legitimate issue with the record, it's that it is overwhelmingly loud. Like, I regularly found that I had to turn down the volume on my speakers throughout the course of this record. And I want to point out that I didn't start listening to this album on like a really high volume setting. It was closer to like a medium mid-range, you know? This thing sounds like it's been turned up to 11, even when in reality, you've got the dial closer to like three or four. And that can be kind of an issue, especially with headphones. But all in all, I still really enjoyed this. If the worst thing I can say about this record is that every once in a while I had to turn it the fuck down, then that's really not that big of an issue. Or at least not so big that I wouldn't feel comfortable giving this Let's go with a low four out of five. I don't know, I'm kind of stuck between like a very enthusiastic 3.5 out of five or a low four out of five. I'm gonna go with the latter because I enjoyed enough of this record that I would return to it a couple more times. There's not really any filler to speak of whatsoever. The performances are all insane. The lyrics are great. The production, not perfect, but pretty good. It fits the vibe and the tone of this record. So yeah, that that's just it. I just think it's really fucking gnarly. Really fucking fun. It's pretty great. Uh, four to five, maybe not the most overwhelmingly enthusiastic four to five, but it's still a great record. I, I recommend it. Just maybe approach with caution, especially if you are listening to this for the first time on headphones. Just a thought. But a four to five nonetheless. Please do check it out. These guys fucking rule. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking-immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.